Today I'd like to talk about what is voicing a headphone and what's its goal. Voicing a headphone is the process of creating its overall acoustic and sonic experience. When we voice a headphone, we think about three things, tone, soundstage, and imaging. Tone describes the overall acoustic signature of the headphone, and generally people will refer to a headphone as being warm, neutral, bright, or fun, whereby they mean it has an emphasis on both the bass and the treble. For many people, tone is the most important aspect of headphone sound, and after all, that makes sense, because if you don't like that, nothing else is really going to matter. Soundstage is the sense of space that the music exists within. One way to think of this is how far away are the closest and further sounds, or how wide and deep is the sound field. Vocals will often define the front and center of the soundstage, while reverb and echoes will define its depth. Headphone soundstage can be anywhere from between your ears, to out here, to out here, to being so good that you're not even quite sure where it ends. And generally, headphones that are better than their lesser counterparts will have a larger soundstage. When you listen to live or studio music, this sense of soundstage and space can really enhance the experience and make it a lot more immersive, especially when you're listening to better recordings. Imaging is simple. It's the placement of instruments within the soundstage. Now it's worth noting that tone, soundstage, and imaging are actually interrelated. For example, a warmer sounding headphone will place vocals closer to you and make the items that it's imaging somewhat larger in the soundstage and less pinpoint than perhaps a brighter headphone will. And it's striking the balance of these tone, soundstage, and imaging that is both the art and science of how you voice a headphone and make it do what you want. Now, when you get it all right and you balance it correctly, our goal is to have a pleasing tone with a soundstage and imaging that allow you to really experience the performance as if you're in the space it was recorded in or the space that the artist intended to create when they were in the studio. And that makes it a much more immersive experience. You can literally close your eyes and visualize the hall you're in and see the musicians within it if you're listening to a symphony. Or in a jazz ensemble, you will uh, not only hear the subtle brushwork and drum work uh, of, the, of the drummer, but you'll also feel the spatial relationship between the pianist and the bass player and the horns as if you're experiencing it in a live hall. And that's very different from simply hearing the notes. So to make that experience as lifelike and exciting as possible is really what it's all about when we try to combine that sense of tone, soundstage, and imaging to make a lifelike experience. So in closing, here are a few easy tips to assess voicing. The first is listen to acoustic music or vocal music because it's much easier to tell when acoustic instruments and voices are correct than to know when electronic music sounds right. After all, who knows what that synthesized blip was actually supposed to sound like, but you have a pretty good idea what a guitar, a drum, or a voice sounds like. Second, close your eyes and reach for that furthest sound in the soundstage to see how deep it reaches. The better recordings, the soundstage will be outside of your head. Lesser headphones and lesser recordings, it may well be between your ears. And for imaging, close those eyes again and see if you can hear where each instrument is within the soundstage. In a symphony, you'll have a large section of strings with depth. If it comes off as a blobby sounding large violin, it's not imaging very well at all. So I hope these insights into the nature and process of voicing are somewhat interesting and thank you very much for your time and attention. Until the next time, have a great day.